I'm starting today's video with an extreme close-up just to highlight the fear of what's about to happen. If you're of a weak disposition, if you've got a weak stomach or you're just a scaredy cat, you might want to look away now because what I'm about to show you is extreme close-up terrifying. Oh, okay, I need a cup of tea to calm down after that. Uh, let's do that and then I'll come back and let's decode exactly what we just saw there. I don't follow The Independent, but I saw that tweet in my feed and once I saw it, I retweeted it so that you guys could see it as well with this comment. Near miss and worryingly close are both misleading and inaccurate ways to describe this. Another example of media sensationalism and lazy dash cam journalism. When I talk about dash cam journalism, you know what that is. It's like all those news companies who say tonight on the news, an epic chase through Melbourne and all they've basically done is found some GoPro footage that someone has of like a car zooming through a red light, smashing into something. That's not news. Now I've already recorded a video on this channel about media overhyping in aviation, which I'll link to above here. But to be honest, it just seems to be getting worse these days. Now, firstly, on that video from The Independent, one thing that should be wiped out completely is the term near miss. There's no such thing in the aviation industry as a near miss. No one refers to it as that. If you want to get technical, the term that's generally used normally in terms of air traffic control is a loss of separation, which is a lot more accurate when you think about what that actually means in that planes are supposed to be separated by a certain amount. In the case of The Independent video, that they showed, they were actually the right distance apart, but we'll come to that in a second. But a loss of separation is when that doesn't happen and that's not maintained. It's not a near miss. But of course, the media companies aren't gonna do that. They're not gonna use the correct terms. They're gonna use the ones that get most clicks. In fact, The Telegraph, a couple of years ago, wrote an article on that very subject and they themselves admitted, loss of separation is certainly less sexy than near miss. Less sexy may be accurate and descriptive, yes, but at the end of the day, to the papers, which is is more important. Now, my favorite part of all of this is how the media can post this kind of misinformed and misleading content in the aviation industry and not expect the internet to jump on them and smash them, which is exactly what happened. God, I love the internet. The first thing that happened is the pilots who saw this tweet jumped onto it and started to come back with corrections like this from the awesome mentor pilot who, if you don't follow, you should. It's a great channel. He said, this is not a near miss. It's a thousand feet above, which is standard in RVSM airspace, reduced vertical separation minima. Then in addition to the pilots who are responding, Aer Lingus themselves, who are one of the two airlines operating the flights in that video, responded with this. Hi, Independent, this was not a near miss. All of our flights operate in controlled airspace where separation standards are enforced by air traffic control in accordance with international rules of the air. At no time was there any reduction in normal safety margins. <gasps> Okay, not so much of a burn from Aer Lingus, but basically they're responding with facts. Ugh, facts. Then after the pilots had responded, after the airlines themselves had responded, internet heroes like James Kennedy jumped on board and came up with responses like this. James Kennedy found the two flights on flight radar, he picked them out, he got their altitudes, and he proved that at that point when they passed each other, they were maintaining the correct vertical separation. So after all those many, many responses, of course, the independent came back and they put a response in, didn't they? Yeah, so it's just down. It's here somewhere. I think, um, no, maybe it's a bit further. I th oh no, it's not there. Is it, did they? No, they, they didn't, oh, okay. Well, no, I couldn't actually find any kind of response whatsoever, not, not to the readers, uh, not to the pilots who responded, not even to Aer Lingus who were operating one of the flights, no response whatsoever from the independent. So I thought maybe they didn't respond to that particular tweet. I should probably jump into their Twitter account and see if they've posted a retraction or an apology or maybe just an update to say how ridiculous that post was. I went through some of their recent tweets. This is what I found. A mother caught daycare worker breastfeeding her baby and people are shocked. Man and dog survived five days trapped in snow by eating taco sauce. Kelly Rowland discusses why she's embracing her natural hair. Rock solid journalism, guys. That's good. I kept looking. This restaurant's waiting staff is made up completely of robots. I mean, come on. That's actually no, I'm quite interested in that. Hang on. Oh, I have to go there. Anyway, I'm not blaming the person who shot the footage. I mean, if you're a passenger on board that plane and you see another aircraft, you know, passing overhead or below you, it doesn't happen all that often from the passenger side of things. And it is kind of cool. And to someone who doesn't fly very often, when you do see that, it can actually be a little bit confronting. So I have no problems with people taking footage like that and sharing it. My problem is when the media pick it up and make a story out of it. Now, I don't know whether it's an actual journalist or it's just the social media team.
team who take these videos and post it out across Twitter and their social media accounts. But whatever's happening, there are some workflow procedures which are failing in the media companies for this kind of misinformation to still be being put out there. A big part of what I'm trying to do on this channel is just to share the love of aviation and travel. If there are already nervous flyers out there who see this kind of thing with the headlines like this passenger witnessed a near miss, it's just gonna make people feel even more nervous about something I don't want people to feel nervous about. It's not just bad journalism, it's not just lazy journalism. To be honest, in my opinion, it's irresponsible journalism. All right, just for a second, because it's getting a bit heavy. Um, let's have a look at some of the funny responses that came to that tweet. Uh, Tupper B said, another amazing near miss at Heathrow this afternoon. I mean, that's like, that's dangerous. Look how close they are. Those 747s are definitely gonna hit each other. Uh, Tupper B came back with a second savage response. Amazing near miss as plane nearly lands on houses that, I mean, who would wanna live there? You are, you are guaranteed to have a plane coming into your front room every morning. Big fan of charts, so I like this one. Uh, at hold Pluto, should you have tweeted this? No, no, but in yellow. At KMAG8, caught a really, really interesting photo here. This has probably never been seen before in the history of the Earth. Uh, near miss as plane almost crashes with moon. <gasps> but then out of nowhere, Sabres Brian 1175 came out with this, what can only be described as a, a mind-blowing tweet. Wouldn't it be a near hit? Unless they hit, then it's a near miss. You know, this kind of thing is happening more and more, and I'm seeing so many more of these posts, this misinformation around aviation and travel online. So much so that I've recently been thinking I might start to do a kind of a weekly This Week in Aviation, uh, just a short video on this channel, just wrapping up a lot of these, because I think someone needs to start calling them out. Um, but I also wanna share some of the information, the positive information as well, the good stories that are happening in the worlds of aviation and travel, and sharing them through what I'm doing here on this channel. So look, here's an experiment. If this video gets a thousand likes I will do a weekly what's new in travel and aviation kind of show if it doesn't get a thousand likes this is gonna be really awkward when you watch this and you look down below and it's had three likes and um, let's see how we go okay let me know in the comments below if you've got some thoughts on that story or if you've seen any other similar stories that you think I should call out on this channel as well uh, give us a like like I say let's try and get to a, a thousand if not I'm gonna look really stupid and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already and you love your aviation and travel content and I'll be back later in the week with a very special announcement Woo!